The Washington Post recently penned an op-ed taking shots at Biden over his adoption of Trump's border policies, including keeping Trump's remain, uh, re re Trump's remain in Mexico policy. The Post writes, quote, Biden has continued Trump's most restrictionist, inhumane, and possibly illegal border policies. In some cases, Biden has even expanded them. You know, there's been some uh, tremendous continuity, really, between the two administrations' policies. The focus, obviously, the media focus, the relentless media focus on on the the cruelty of of the immigration policy that did that that moved that shifted when it wasn't Trump anymore. Um, but but what you know what do you think are the are the political implications of that? Because it's not to me it's not always clear. I, I think some uh, some in the media or some liberals you know, will assert that the Hispanic community wants a certain immigration policy and then, you know, we don't always see that necessarily or that, that, they, that they're so much more in favor of immigration or, or against uh, or in favor of illegal immigration than the underlying population, which I think often does not turn out to be true. Again, you need to chop up the, uh, the Hispanic community into sort of smaller voting blocks and just the, the larger voting block. For the millions of, of, of Hispanics who are swayed electorally by immigration policy, yes, Biden is pushing them away with these, with these immigration and border policies. And, and the, the reason is, is pretty simple. They, they feel like they don't have a team, right? They, and, and, and the Biden administration is doing in a lot of ways what the Obama administration did, is that they're reacting more aggressively to the rights or the Republican judgment of their border and immigration policies than that of that subset of Hispanics that really care about immigration. And really, that subset is part of their base. The Republicans who, who say that they've, uh, you know, that there's open borders and border chaos and, and all that, they're really never going to vote for Biden or a Democrat, or at least not in the, you know, upcoming election cycles. So that's what that's very frustrating for that subset of, of Hispanics. And the, the subset of Hispanics that's not as swayed by the by immigration policy is more likely to be swayed by the Republican economic messaging. So it's it's sort of with Hispanics, Biden is doubly shooting himself in the foot by uh, by not listening to his base and sort of rallying up his base ahead of a, a ahead of a difficult midterm through sort of a proactive action on immigration and sort of letting letting the, the harsher parts of, of Trump immigration policy stand. Right. And, and we're and we're sort of in a way making the mistake that the media so often mistakes right here just in this conversation, which is to talk about the Hispanic vote and then and then talk about immigration policy as if that is the number one concern right. of, of the Hispanic vote. But I w want to ask you, let's say in a world where Joe Biden had actually passed the Build Back Better Act, uh, where do you where do you think he'd be in relation to uh, the, the Hispanic vote that is winnable? So the Build Back Better Act seemed almost designed to attract the Hispanic vote. As you said, immigration is usually not number one. Uh, usually you have jobs, education, and health care are the top three. Um, the environment is very important to a lot of Hispanic communities, both whether they live in Florida and are afraid of rising sea levels or in really polluted parts of major metropolitan areas or live in California and, they're, you know, and they have the fires. They're, they're very, it's, it's a, it's a series of communities that are disproportionately affected by the environment. And then immigration does come in, you know, for that subset. So Build Back Better sort of addressed all of those and addressed them in a way that would benefit lower income communities, whether it's the child care part, whether it's, you know, easier access to health care, to education, um, the environmental aspects of it, or whether it's the immigration part, you know, that, that had made it in. Um, I think you you could have seen build back better through a lens of all the policy promises that democrats made to his to hispanics and not passing it means maybe they tried maybe most democrats tried but those policies aren't in there and child care continues to be a, a huge issue for for a lot of hispanics especially the poorer ones who are also the ones who who democrats need to activate to really get out the vote and to participate in order to, for, the, uh, for the Hispanic vote to be the sway vote that they want it to be, 
not only, I mean, not in California, really, but in Arizona, for instance, and even in states like Georgia. Yeah. Raphael Bernal, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Stick around. We'll have more Rising right after this.